everybody, I'm Matt Safino. I thought we'd talk a little bit about the king tides been in the news lately and uh, what they are and what they are not. First of all, we'll begin with the name. The king tides are also known as the spring tide, which has nothing to do with the season of spring. The king tides or the spring tides can happen any month of the year. They are originally called the spring tides because it was when the water would spring forth more than normal there. Uh, so again, it, it's not the name. They can happen any month of the year. In fact, the king tides is just a, a common name. It's not really a scientific term, but it happens when the earth, the moon and the sun are all aligned. So we get a greater gravitational pull. I'll explain that in a minute. In this case, and again in December, it's happening during a new moon, which means the moon is between the earth and the sun. It can also happen with a full moon, in which case the earth would be between the sun and the moon. The moon would be over on this part of its orbit around our great blue marble. But again, we're dealing with a new moon, and when that happens, the you get the combined gravitational pull of the sun and the moon. Now normally you have two, well normally every day you have two high tides and two low tides basically every 24 hours. One, the greater one, the more extreme one is caused by the pull, the gravitational pull of the moon because the moon is so much closer to us. And then the other one is caused by the gravitational pull of the sun. But when they are in a line, the moon, the earth and the sun are in a line, the high tides and the low tides are more extreme because you get a combined effect of both the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon all together. So again, you get a tidal bulge from the sun, you get one from the moon, and during the spring tide or the king tides, the total tidal bulge is greater because of the combined effect of the gravity of both celestial bodies. Here's another way of looking at it too. It's also called a perigean spring tide. Perigee is when the moon is at its closest approach in its orbit around Earth. It is not a circular orbit, it's more elliptical, so there is one part of the orbit when it's closer. So that's why we're having these more extreme tides because it's happening at perigee when the moon is at its closest approach to planet Earth. So that's the setup. That's why we have tides. That's why some tides are more extreme than others. Well, let's take a closer look at the actual daily tides that we have. Now, this is a graph for Astoria showing the tides, and this would be the solar tide when it's not as extreme, but then this is the lunar tide. You get up to a 10.2. That's a big number. You get it into double digits. People take notice of that, too. Then it goes down to a negative tide, back up to the smaller high tide and the less extreme low tide, and on and on and on. So the thing about this is this on the on the uh, scale here. This is relative to something called the MLLW, which is the mean lower low water level, which is basically an average of the lowest of the two low tides that happen every day. It's a 19 year average. And so everything is judged by that. So the 10.2 is 10.2 feet above that mean lower low water level. With the negative tide, it's 1.35 feet in this case below that level, so it gives us a benchmark to guide the tides. And again, when you get up to the double digits, those are pretty high tides. But it's not as extreme as you might think or as it might sound. It doesn't mean there's an extra 10 feet of water. This is a map for a calendar, basically, of the tides every day of the month. And we'll zoom in on this so it's a little easier to read. But you see some of these days here where the tides are 6, 7 feet, 7, 8 feet, and so on and so forth. Fairly common run-of-the-mill tide. So when you compare that to a 10-foot tide, you're really only talking about a tide that is two, maybe three feet above what we would normally see. So yes, they are bigger tides. The highs are higher, the lows are lower, but it doesn't mean you're going to have a 10-foot wall of water. And remember, the tides aren't waves. This doesn't mean you're going to have 10-foot breakers crashing over the jetties. It just means there's more water available, and it really comes into play when you have a storm coming along, that's where it really is noticeable. If you have a strong storm happening when you have these high king tides, because the strong storms will generate large swells and there's just more water available to be piled up into big waves. So that's when we really notice the effect of the king tides is when it comes with a big, big storm. Now, it just so happens this month we'll actually have offshore winds, which will oppose the incoming water and help to lessen the effect of the king tides. Perhaps the biggest impact is when you have a strong ebb tide or, an, or a flood current. That is when you get most of the water coming into the bays or going out with an outgoing tide. Ebb come incoming, or ebb is the outgoing rather, the flood tide is the incoming. So you have extremely strong currents when you have a king tide simply because there's more water that has to move through the same area. And that could be a problem for boaters as well, especially small craft coming in and out of the 
uh, out of our harbors and bays here in the Oregon coast. Uh, there is a greater chance for sneaker waves simply again because you have more water and especially you have large swells and a larger run up of water onto the beaches, but also into low lying areas along the coast that normally flood. So again, King Tides explained really a big deal when you have strong storms and large swells. Luckily this time around we don't, but it's certainly something we'll keep an eye on. Thank you.